Welcome everyone to the hospitality live section. As you can tell, I raced from the EBC to my home here in Southern California, had a little wardrobe change, a little hair and makeup activity. And here we are coming to you live from, uh, from my, my home office. It's a good thing you live yeah. close to the uh, EBC in Irvine, right? Just a hop, skip and a jump away. Looks like you'd had a little wardrobe change yourself. So well, well done, well done. So uh, thanks everyone for joining us here today. Hopefully the industry has a much better perspective on the power of the Samsung ecosystem and the impact our products, solutions and services can have on their business. From the Samsung's perspective, digital transformation has taken on a very different meaning over the last year with a lot of ebb and flow uh, to the priorities as the industry has reacted to the pandemic. The industry was cruising along when, when most everything came to an abrupt halt uh, as COVID-19 COVID shutdown commenced in late Q1. We brought in a couple of industry veterans today to talk through the impact COVID-19 has had on digital transformation strategies throughout COVID-19, what it looks like in the future and how they handled it throughout, uh, throughout COVID-19 over the last year. So let's meet the panel and uh, dive in. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. We've got a couple of really um, great industry veterans and experts. I'll start with Colin Dixon, who's the VP of IT Support Services for Diamond Resorts. <laughs> And we have Brendan Gephardt, Managing Partner of Night Tech, a Samsung Platinum Systems Integrator Partner. Um, Colin, I'll throw it over to you. Why don't you give yourself uh, an introduction and let us know about you and your company. Yeah, thank you, Fred, appreciate it. Hello, everyone. I'm Colin Dixon. I'm the Vice President of IT Support Services for Diamond Resorts. I oversee our global support operations and guest technology for Diamond. Who is Diamond? Um, some of you may know Diamond Resorts is a vacation ownership company. We offer hundreds of of destinations worldwide in events through our Diamond Events platform. We provide amazing experiences for our members that includes unforgettable gateways to exclusive resorts, VIP receptions, and dinners. This service enables us to provide access to a world of entertainment activities. Our membership ensures that people are always looking forward to vacationing with us. That's awesome. Brandon, how about you? Well, tell us about yourself and a little bit about Night Tech. Yeah, thank you for having me, Sean and Fred and Samsung. Much appreciated. Um, Nitech is one of the largest uh, hospitality and professional AV dealer uh, in the country. Um, and we really can be everything from a fully turnkey uh, partner of yours to an a la carte partner. Um, so often we are actually specifying product for our customers, negotiating on their behalf, selling them the hardware, sometimes installing um, and also liquidating. Um, and sometimes we're one of, uh, you know, one of the pieces in that equation. Um, so really our goal is always where are your pain points? How can we help you get through that whole process and, and end up with the vision that you're seeking to, to attain as a, uh, as a partner of ours? That's great. I, I think, Sean, before we get into you, I think um, what's great about this panel is we've got two very good perspectives. We've got the perspective of a hotelier and customer that consumes our technology and our products, um, and we also have a perspective of a partner. So I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Fantastic. So, Colin, let's start with you. So, uh, again, we're going to try to focus on, you know, what what was happening before COVID-19 hit, what's happened throughout COVID, and then what's kind of what the outlook is uh, going forward. So let's start pre-pandemic. You know, what was Diamond Resorts' digital transformation strategy? What were you trying to accomplish in order to you know, take, take uh, Diamond Resorts to the next level from a, a digital uh, messaging standpoint? Sure. I think really for us prior to COVID, our digital strategy was to perform a complete overall of our digital platforms around our website presence, mobile, digital strategy, and TV. This included transition to a new CMS platform to harmonize content across our digital ecosystem. From a guest room perspective, uh, we were impressed with the Samsung Link solution as that provided flexibility and connectivity um, options um, with the ability to essentially control content. And we were keen to really pilot that solution. From a digital signage initiatives, we were starting to implement Magic Info to essentially control and deploy content in one of our newly renovated sales centers in Hawaii in early 2020 in order to really digitalize that content and make a more immersive experience as you tour our products. As we started down this path, COVID hit and everything came to a halt, as you <laughs> mentioned there. Um, so we had to quickly alter our initiatives. Um, for us, first, we had to quickly transition our workforce to work from home in a matter of days to ensure business continuity. Being a hospitality company, about a quarter of our workforce had laptops, which allowed us to easily take them to take their device um, and work from home. 
other corporate departments like call centers, right, accounting, et cetera, taking our PC home was challenging from a security and support perspective. Uh, we were able to leverage our virtual desktop infrastructure, which allowed us to better support our team members um, during that time and also maintain a high level of security. Um, this allowed us to really rapidly transition over 2,500 uh, users to work from home um, in a matter of, of a week. Um, secondly, I would say fundamentally, we had to shift how we engage, engage with our members. During lockdown, no one could travel. We need to ensure that we can stay in contact with our members. We did this by leveraging our Diamond Index platform to perform virtual concerts and meet and greets with our brand ambassadors. Um, some of the names like Cole Swindell, Lee Bryce, Gina Kramer, Colt Ford, uh, we leverage um, right, this platform um, just to ensure that we can have a successful engagement. Um, and what we've seen from the feedback is it was well received. Now, as we started kind of planning for the reopening, right, we had a new set of challenges to overcome. One, how do we protect our guests from a health and safety perspective? Um, that was very, very keen to ensure that we're going to open back up um, with the health and safety um, involved. First, we enacted the Diamond Standard of Clean, working with in-house and outside experts, plus leveraging our partners. More than ever, we needed to ensure that we could leverage our various partnerships to help us overcome any challenge. Uh, we knew it wasn't something we could do on our own. Um, really, for us, this really spanned across right, our members, reducing our touch points during check-in, and also our sales presentation process. Right? For us being in vacation ownership, it wasn't your traditional check-in and check-out, right? Us, we're a high-touch, high-visibility organization from a sales presentation, so we had to essentially overcome that from a health and safety perspective. Um, fast forward four months after the lockdown back in March, right? The recovery for Diamond was was better than anticipated for us. Uh, we saw an average of about ninety percent occupancy in our drive to markets in B and beef on regions. Wow. Um, around the Arizona, um, our Tennessee, our Virginia Beach areas. Uh, for mid big stays, we saw that dropped off. Um, we were just averaging around 40 to 50%. I think for the vacation ownership entry, what makes it a little bit different um, from the traditional hotels is just our unit amenities. For us, we have one, two, and three bedrooms with full kitchens, washer and dryers, which really provides a home away from home that allow them to still socially distance and experience outdoor activities. For us, our transition, our vacation ownership sales, we were able to actually hit 50% of our sales budget in the third quarter of 2020. So for us, we definitely did saw an uptick. Um, as COVID hit, people wanted to get out, right? Um, being stuck in your home for 30, 60 days, people wanted to get out and travel. So we saw that big increase um, during those weekend, long weekend stays. That's fantastic. Th thanks for that, uh, Colin. Uh, you know, you touched on a couple of things that I think are, are uh, intriguing to us. I mean, you, you know, basically getting your internal employees ramped up at home. I think you had a pretty good, pretty good plan on there. What about what about from um, a broader industry standpoint? We saw a lot of brands that were trying to have a shelter in place, but work from their resort kind of uh, marketing approach. Did you guys do anything like that to get your members to to come to their to come to the resorts? And what did that look like for you? Yeah, we did do that. Actually, before I actually get into that, we actually started up a, a separate program for first responders uh, where they can stay at our resorts in certain target areas um, um, at a very low rate. Um, it was just something for us to ensure we're providing back to the community. Um, for, um, for the work from home, um, yes, um, we have a portion of a, of a hotel rental business as part of our operations. Uh, and we definitely wanted to kind of leverage the work from a hotel and work from our units um, as an additional strategy to get um, guests to stay at our properties. Fantastic. The other thing that I, I, I thought stood out for me is I've had the privilege of uh, participating in your LG, LG, LPGA Tournament of Champions uh, uh, tournament for the last few years, uh, which has been fantastic. And you've you've woven in the, the concert series there. And obviously, that's a critical part to how you got. So I'm really glad to see that you guys um, 
uh, went uh, virtual on that. But talk to us a little bit about that tournament this year, because it kind of took on a little life of its own. I mean, I think it was going to be the first LPGA tournament that had fans at, and then you know things kind of changed at the last minute. But talk to us a little bit about about that tournament and and how you had to pivot very quickly to adapt to the, the changing ever changing needs of COVID. Yeah, our our tournament of champions, um, as you said, right, is an official LPGA, LPGA event. Um, and where we really had to pivot is um, making sure that we had the precautions in place um, to make that event successful, which included right, mandatory space covering, social distancing, right, player testing for, for negative um, for coronavirus prior to the event. Uh, for most of our musical performers, um, for our evening events, it was their first time on stage with a full band in almost a year. Um, we, of course, had to change the format. Um, so during the golf tournament, um, only sponsors and invited guests was actually allowed on the course. It wasn't open to spectators. Uh, for the evening events, um, th the same practice applied, um, but we changed the format to be more of a festival open format, uh, which was just uh, amazing to kind of see, um, right, people enjoying, right, our concept series at night. Hmm. Fantastic. Um, I, the last thing I think is, uh, you know, again, I, I think you guys were in a unique, unique position in that you you were able to maintain some occupancy through throughout COVID, and uh, you know, from from our perspective, we've seen all kinds of different things happening within the market. Some some um, ownership groups would, you know, froze capital and nothing would happen. But you guys stayed the course. You invested um, um, mostly on the guest room side of things throughout the year at a pace that was consistent with years years past, which is of course very greatly appreciated. But um, I, I think you guys took a very deliberate approach with with maintaining your assets the way that you needed to and making sure you were investing at the right time, even when occupancy was low. So appreciate that. I just wanted to call that out. Sure. I, I think really the change for us, right, being a vacation ownership, our members already paid for their vacation, mm. right? So so typically that's how we see a faster recovery than traditional hotels. But at the same time, all those capital projects that we had in place, we wanted to stay the course and ensure to get done, right? There's no opportune time to take care of those projects when you're at a low occupancy. That's great. I think we're going to shift over to Brendan now. Um, just Brennan, given Nitec's position as a premier platinum partner that serves really digital signage needs and content management solutions across the, the, the broader hospitality vertical, uh, you get to serve uh, hotel customers that are representative across all of our segments, whether it's, you know, um, the limited service up through uh, full service uh, four and five star uh, resorts. Um, and I'm curious from your vantage point and your perspective, you know, obviously COVID's the, the, the 800 pound gorilla that's really dominated the dialogue in, in our industry uh, this past year. And we, we are very optimistic and we're seeing the recovery happen, albeit a little slower than we would all like. But um, I'm curious from your vantage point, how has the industry responded to the pandemic in terms of, you know, with regards specifically to digital content delivery? Yeah, I mean, I think what the, the story that Colin just told is a story that I've heard now for the past 365 days, you know, since since every, everybody shut down. I mean, I think the thing that we hear most from our customers um, across all segments is we've taken steps to make sure that our guests are safer than they were before, the, you know, increased cleanliness standards. Um, and they want to communicate that from the moment that they walk into the property. Um, which we help them do through Samsung digital signage, uh, Magic Info, uh, we utilize that. And then once they check in and get into their guest room, um, you know, they want to make sure that they also communicate that, that, hey, this room's been cleaned, it's cleaner than it was ever before. Um, and that, you know, every time that, you know, basically a guest is touching anything that they're, they're getting that message of, hey, this was cleaned. This is what, this is the steps we've taken. Um, and, you know, I think that that is really what I've heard most out of all of our customers is we've taken steps to ensure their safety. We're excited to welcome them back. And we want to make sure that that's communicated in every possible way using any technology we can possibly leverage that we bought over the last few years and that we're looking to purchase in the future. So I think it's also kind of created a more of a cohesive mindset of how can I, you know, we bought these, you know, we bought these public displays years ago. Um, and now I just learned we have magic info. I used to be looping a USB and now, now you're actually leveraging this technology. How can I get that cohesive message going and how can we make sure that when God forbid something like this happens in the future, we, we can pivot and right away say, 
communicate with the guests directly, you know, at the in a public space as well as in the guest room. Yeah, for sure. I think prior to obviously the pandemic arriving, a lot of our hotel customers um, admittedly were dabbling in the digital transformation space. No you doubt. Know, we had sporadic kind of um, initiatives around transitioning um, signage and display needs and uh, front desk operations and even guest room television experiences. Um, but but really missing that cohesive push. I think mm-hmm. what we've seen with COVID is that there's been a, a really big emphasis on the the benefits of flexible digital content delivery. Um, and certainly the, the hotel customers that were investing in that technology prior to the pandemic were well positioned to use it. How have you seen the industry itself pivot more towards that being a a front and center um, business criteria, if you will, um, for some of the purchases or technology initiatives that are that are are coming are bubbling up from a need standpoint? Yeah, weirdly enough, it's I, I was thinking about this earlier actually. It's we have I think I've heard less of. I mean, still, everybody's talking price. At the end of the day, there's there's some kind of price component, but there's definitely less of a what's the best price and more of a how can I leverage this in the future? Um, so we're definitely seeing just more of a kind of, a, again, I'm probably going to repeat myself a bunch with just a cohesive uh, approach to how can I tie all of this together? What did we purchase in the past? Does everything that we purchased in the past tie together, which for you know, 60% of our customers, the answer was kind of, hey, you might need to get a set-top box or we might need to take some of these displays that were less expensive, let's say, a few years ago. So you wound up going with them and now we're going to slap a set-top box on them to get everything cohesive. So I think it was kind of just that moment where everybody kind of realized that this is something that, you know, really does benefit us. And and COVID actually kind of provided that opportunity um, for us to be able to help them get that communicated to their guests um, and, you know, kind of to kind of put the sales pitch, put put our money behind the sales pitch, you know, and, and put ourselves behind the sales pitch. And someday you're going to really want to utilize this. And I think, you know, COVID really brought that to the forefront of our customers' minds. So, um, you know, we see a lot of that. Like we're working on projects where we're removing guest room compendiums, the physical compendium. So you don't have a big paper book that a million people right. have touched before they get into the room. Um, you know, we're really, you know, I mean, utilizing Link, uh, link Cloud and Reach, you're actually able to centrally manage the TVs, so you're not having to spend, you know, an engineer in to go um, to go touch each room when you get the the, the random channel lineup change. Um, I think we're really this year and throughout the last year, we've we've you know had guests or guests. We've had uh, customers who have you know told us, "Wow, this is actually you know this has actually helped us with with this transformation that we've we've had both with communicating and operationally with touching the customer physically less." Yeah, I think uh, I, I think a, a recurring theme that I even heard during Colin your your uh, your earlier uh, description of, of some of your technology and digital transformation strategies was uh, content harmonization. And I think one of the things that we we certainly have been responding to is we've been leaning in and listening to our customers more. Is customers are asking us to offer solutions that are more flexible. Uh, more feature rich to bring guest experiences to a level that meet or exceed at home experiences. And they want to be able to do more with a, with less, less technology footprint, less cost structure. Um, and when you think about those constraints, it, it, it kind of leads very naturally to a cloud based discussion. I think when you, when you talk about cloud and you've got magic info on one side and link cloud on other side to address guest room, magic info to, to address the property, what you're really kind of describing is a is a product strategy that that drives towards content harmonization and uh, and fleet management across the entire ecosystem. Sean's your video talked about the entire ecosystem of hospitality. Um, and it's really the story there is about it's about device and content management at a central level so that we can provide hoteliers like yourself, Colin, the ability to do a lot more with a lot less. Um, floating that question to you, uh, Colin, Brendan, please, if you could also pep in some use cases, where do you see content harmonization uh, playing a, a, a pivotal role in your in your ongoing digital transformation strategies going forward. I, I'll, I'll start there. I think for us, really, the integration is going to be very kind of it's going to be very key because we're looking at it from every touch point, right, from a customer journey, right. So we're looking at it from the web presence. We're looking at it from a 
a, um, where we're communicating <laughs> via text, right, with our membership base. So once they get on property and then they're checking in and then now they're in the guest unit, right? So we need to ensure that we have the, a very tight integration when it comes to the very CMS platforms um, and, and, and cloud, of course, gives you that capability and that flexibility to do that. Um, and that's one thing I would say that is very intriguing about the Samsung Link Reach is having that tight integration with right our core CMS, right, with then also with um, Samsung Link Reach. Yeah, and I think even taking this, you know, COVID's on everybody's mind. So obviously we, you know, we talk COVID, but I think largely like what I see with Link, uh, with Link Cloud as well as Magic Info is the projects that we've worked on before COVID and now through COVID more and more, we're actually working with marketing teams. We're working, we're engaging with them. And I've learned, Colin, uh, marketing teams, I mean, we, we get it down to the font and the exact color of the font. Um, right. So I think, you know, I think that there really was already kind of a driving, this is our website. When when we get to, when, you know, a guest gets to a property, we want them to walk into the property, look at big, beautiful video wall that feels and looks and acts like our website and our branding. And then we want them to check in. We want them to turn the TV on. Um, we want our logo to pop up when the TV turns on. We want the menu that loads to look and feel and act like the website they were interacting with before they got there. Um, so I think COVID actually has kind of driven the, hey, we really need to communicate this to our guests. Yeah. Um, but outside of the COVID piece, I think, you know, what, what you've been driving and Sean has, Sean and I have probably talked ecosystem um, for the past five years. And I think now we're really actually starting to feel it where it's, okay, this is why you were telling me to sell digital signage five years ago. And, and now, you know, now we've got the guest room piece as well and tying all of that together and creating kind of becoming, you know, to some degree, a marketing piece of the customers that we're working with and fully understanding what they're looking for. It has been a blast. I mean, you know, before it was kind of sell TVs, get some free to guest content in there, turn yeah. the TV and everybody's happy. Um, once Reach came out, now Link Cloud, the newest iteration and Magic Info is is really beefed up. I mean, you know, my my in-house designers are, when we get a project, it's like, cool, let's get a call with marketing, let's really dig in, let's, let's get this, you know, let's really deliver a product which they've already tailored perfectly for their guests. So those projects for us are a ton of fun, you know, and I mean, out, outside of the COVID piece and, you know, being able to kind of help with the COVID piece is kind of a cherry on top. Um, I think the, the branding thing was kind of already a, a big movement within the industry um, and people that were kind of behind kind of got pushed toward it uh, due to COVID. So, yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's been an interesting evolution in that sense. That's, that's really spot on. I think if I could narrow the next question, it would be more about the guest experience itself. And I'm going to direct this question to you, Colin, and Brendan, for you as a follow-up. Um, with regard to the guest in-room experience, um, how do you see that transitioning as we go through this recovery and we have guests coming to stay at your properties um, with probably new new habits, new, new, new needs, right? That are, are very specific to their, the way they've experienced uh, COVID in their day in and day out lives. Do you see, how do you see that, that experience changing? And then what, how, what is the impact to your technology strategy going forward to, to respond to those needs? I was, I, for me, I would say, I see the impact really to right the, do we have the necessary bandwidth, right, at our resorts to consume all of the all of the uh, additional content that guests are bringing to the guest units? Um, the one thing we've we've experienced is um, is that bottleneck when it comes to to bandwidth, right? Do we have to actually have the throughput um, for bringing your own device, um, displaying content to the guest TVs? Um, what we've seen in, in our resorts is. Uh, a lot of our guests, especially during COVID, right, they're spending spending a little bit more time in the guest units, right, because they want to get away from being on lockdown, right. So, mm -hmm. for for our members, um, for them, um, we're just seeing a spike when it comes to the amount of bandwidth consumption uh, with the services um, in the room when it comes to guest Wi-Fi and also looking to display their um, their content on the guest televisions. 
So your 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 number one priority right now is to ensure you've got appropriate infrastructure and internet bandwidth availability for your guests, right? Correct. Um, Brendan, from from your perspective, um, talk to us about maybe the increase of OTT requests and, mm -hmm. and solutions that offer uh, other streams of content delivery into the guest room, and how you see that kind of transforming the broader landscape. For sure. Yeah. I mean, we definitely have had a lot of we're hitting that bandwidth cap and and we're you know we're our guests are definitely you know more over the top content they want they're interested in casting they're interested in in kind of that next evolution of, of giving that home feel when you're on a vacation which i think you know due to covid definitely had a lot of people in that scenario um I, it's funny because the ru750 series to me is probably i'm definitely going to set the standard um, with re with regard to out of the box, over the top content that you'll be able to utilize, um, and that to me, you know, Netflix out of the box has been something that we we've, we've been talking about in, as an industry for for internally for years, and you know, since I got into the industry ten years ago, we had customers asking us about it. So, you know, the RU750 series coupled with Link Cloud, I mean, that that is a I don't think that any really anybody's going to be able to touch that level of turn the TV on. I mean, vast majority of people have a Samsung TV in their house. They, they're already used, used to that kind of UI and feel, and we're now able to give that within the guest room and lead them directly to a, a Netflix native app, um, a variety of casting apps that actually are not native to necessarily that, uh, that TV itself, but that we can make feel like it is. So we can actually map buttons to HDMI one, so it flips over. Um, you know, you've got a casting screen that pops up. You can connect your phone, cast, connect to the uh, virtual VPAN. My engineers will be proud. Um, and <laughs> guy. Um, yeah. you know, and we can actually make it feel like you're at home. You know, you turn the TV on. Um, you know, we're communicating that branding. Um, yeah. but we're also, you know, actually we're we're now here. Netflix is here. You know, and out of the box, not you know, not not any kind of crazy setup on the back end. Um, you know, I mean, there, there's a little bit of tinkering, but outside of that, I mean, it's, it's as close as we've ever been to pop it open, hang it on the wall and have Netflix and be able to cast and have this beautiful UI that actually, you know, feels like your home. That's great. That's great. And I think just in the last few minutes we've got left, I'd like to maybe pull the lens back a little bit and mm -hmm. think more holistically about total property solutions, specifically around digital display. Um, Colin, to you, um, with regard to digital display strategies and how you're looking to leverage your uh, display array uh, throughout your properties, from a, from an arrival to uh, to guest stay to um, even even post stay, how do you see that transitioning over your you know your post COVID uh, digital transformation strategy? For us, we're going to stay the course in our digital transformation strategy. Um, it's something that we know we still have to put a, a major investment in. Um, as it relates to the to the uh, property level, um, we're still going to ensure that we're investing and we can actually push that content out to those TVs um, for any type of um, resort specific um, amenities, um, marketing, um, or even just brand announcements. Uh, our, our first one, our first property in Hawaii, uh, which our sales center uh, just opened a few months ago, um, for us, that was very keen to get that digital um, display magic info um, integrated in our property um, so that we can have that more immersive experience. Um, so we're gonna stay the course. Um, that's something that we know that we have to invest in um, just to ensure that we'll be able to provide um, that, that digital strategy at that property level. That's great. That's great. And Brendan, with regard to you, I'm sure you've got some pretty interesting use cases you can you can give us examples of, of given your vantage point. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I look at it's funny. I look at Magic Info as as the first thing that a guest should see from from what we've worked on. You know that. So you walk into a property, you're welcome to the property uh, through you know a big beautiful Samsung display. We've hopefully created the content for you or your marketing team has. And then, you know, leveraging that directly then into the guest room, um, I think. And anybody that already had all of that set up, you know, this the moment that they opened, they were able to go, you know, hey, uh, social distancing. This is what we've done. They were able to immediately communicate that. 
Um, so we, you know, we had a ton of projects right off the bat that were, you know, help us communicate that. And I think now, um, you know, we're going to be working on getting that fully cohesive into the guest room and hopefully someday down the line, actually, you know, those two pieces that, you know, the CMS software on the public display side and then the CMS software in the guest room side actually kind of merging and becoming, you know, yeah. one one cohesive unit, um, you know, that, that we get to work on with our with our customers. So that to me is, is really exciting. And the one thing I'd be remiss if we uh, didn't bring up too is the analytics piece, um, you know, with, within Link Cloud, because I think that is going to enable um, people like Colin and, and customers like Colin to, you know, really see what, what our guests looking at, um, what are they watching, um, what are they clicking on? Are they are are they responding to the bar ad or you know the content that we're pushing? Is it actually being effective? And that is something that the, this industry has been waiting for forever. Um, actually saying you actually made a difference in this customer's in this guest's experience. They actually did see that message. They did go down and, and have happy hour. Um, they did come down to the concert. They did do those things, and you actually triggered that. You know, I think before it was kind of. It's all there, but we don't know who's clicking on it. Um, right. So we just, you know, don't really know how effective it is. And now we're finally going to be able to say this is how effective it is. And I think that's going to be huge um, for people utilizing the platform. That's great. That's well, well, well said, uh, uh, Brendan. I, I think both of you touched on a couple of a couple of things there that really point to what digital transformation truly means for this industry. And it's really about about controlling every one of those digital endpoints, whether it's a mobile phone. Um, uh, uh, LED wall behind the front desk, guest room TV, uh, uh, a digital sign, whatever the story is, it's about controlling the story and the messaging and making sure that the end user brand message gets to the consumer in the right way, and then efficiently and effectively pushing out the messaging. And that, that's really what, that, that's what digital transformation truly means in this, in this space. So um, as we uh, near close or conclusion to the hospitality portion of VX, um, any any closing words or comments from either you, Colin, or, or Brendan, or Fred? Who wants to go first? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take well, it. I, yes, go ahead, Brendan. There we go. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I mean, I, I'm just excited to work. Uh, you know, I, I hope everybody sees me uh, given the spiel, and I would love to work. I, I, I think I, genuinely the projects that we love are ones where we're fully engaged with the customer. Um, we're leveraging the technology that we've sold them, and we're actually helping them, you know, deliver what they, they think of as their brand to their guests. So just looking forward to hopefully working with uh, some people who have, who have listened to us um, and really looking forward to the future of, uh, of Link Cloud, of Samsung Hospital. Hospitality, uh, Samsung Pro Displays, all of this is, is really exciting and I think going to rapidly advance um, from where we, you know, where we're having this conversation right now. Yeah, and, and then for me, it's, it's right saying thank you, right, to the to, to Samsung team, really to provide us that partnership and support uh, to support our efforts. Um, there's definitely, we wouldn't be able to um, be on a journey we're on without Samsung um, and we're definitely looking forward to really leveraging um, um, Magic Info uh, additionally, and also really the Samsung Link Reach uh, platform. That's great. I think from Samsung's perspective, we have genuine and deep appreciation for our partners um, and our end customers that, that see the vision of digital transformation and like to use your words, Colin, are staying the course and are believing in an optimistic recovery that this industry so desperately needs and deserves. Um, we look forward to a, a, a recovery, a rapid recovery, and one that brings us to, uh, to a complete recovery position. Back to you, Sean. Beautiful. Thanks, Fred. Thanks, guys. And listen, I, I really want to say thank you both, Colin and, and Brendan, for your participation and collaboration today and just throughout the years. Um, we, we really, like Fred said, we really appreciate your partnership to, to you both. You know, as I noted in the opening video, the, the hospitality industry is indeed very resilient. We, you know, we've taken a few punches in us last year, to say the least, but, um, you know, the rebound will come and we will recover. It always has and it always will. Um, it is a very resilient industry. You know, we've been watching, Samsung's been watching very closely, you know, all of the key indicators within the industry, such as occupancy and average daily rate and rev par index, just to shift the sense of what's going to happen and when the return is going to happen. Um, and, and parallel to these uh, trending uh, these trends that are actually trending in the right direction for us, we also look at, at group business. And what we're seeing is that those the ADR and the occupancy is starting to tick up, not fast enough, as Fred said earlier, uh, but group business is picking up in the second half. So we're, we're very, very 
optimistic about what's going to happen uh, for the balance of the year, uh, without without a doubt. And there will be a resur resurgence, as Brendan alluded to earlier in the conversation. While these virtual events are, are, are fantastic and they've kept us close, uh, somewhat close and somewhat connected over the last year, nothing can replace face-to-face -face meetings. The hospitality industry actually relies on it and we, we need them in order to get back to business the right way. So we look forward to seeing you on airplanes, in hotels, in casinos, <laughs> at Diamond Resorts, on cruise ships. Thank you so much for your time today. Have a wonderful evening and enjoy the balance of the VX 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks to everyone.